What's up guys, it's Unders, and today we're having a look at the new 808 Studio version 2 from the guys over at Initial Audio. What it is, is a bass synthesizer. It's designed to be really ergonomic and quick and easy for you to program your sounds. So let's jump over to the DAW and break down exactly how you can build a nice, unique bass sound super fast. Okay, so we've got Initial Audio's 808 Studio 2 loaded up in Logic. So this is the midnight preset in 808 Studio 2, and we're gonna use it to break down exactly how it works as a synth. And we're gonna go left to right because it's the most logical way. So in the left-hand side here, we've got the whole preset section. Right at the top where it says a bank name, we can create our own custom banks and name them as such. So if there's our favorites, we could make a favorite bank and create the bank that way. And just below it, we've got the bank type. So if I added banks over time, at the moment, we just have the factory bank in there. We just click it and we'll be able to select any other banks we install. And then below where it says preset, we've got all of the individual presets available in that bank. And like I said, this is midnight and there's a whole bunch in here, over 70. At the bottom, if we've customized a preset, we can save it. We can also export our bank or open a folder with a new bank in. The left and right arrows will just take us through the next preset, whereas the left and right arrows at the top will take us through to the next bank. Moving over to the next section now, it's all blocked off in smaller sections, and something you might easily overlook is just at the top here we have a sequencer section. It's currently turned off, but if we engage it, we've then got a drop down menu, and it's much like the sequencer in Initial Audio's Heat Up 3. So once we put in some triggers like this, they work like MIDI notes and on playback. it will trigger those instead. We could program entire melodies in this way and just trigger it with a single note. You can just tap clear notes to clear them away. If you tap load, we actually have some presets for the sequencer. If we were to just hold a single note down, it would trigger these. By default, there are 16 in there for you to play around with. Just below is where we start to get into the juicier stuff. 808 Studio 2 has a sampler section built into it as well. That's that section just here. We can completely disengage it and it would just play our oscillators. In this patch, this 808 impact is what gives the snap into this bass line. And then the oscillators take over for the sub. By enabling follow pitch, it means the sample will always be pitched to the relative key you're playing. If you switch follow pitch off, it won't match the notes. This could be great for a single note triggered over and over, but if you're playing something that's designed to be musical, having follow pitch on is really useful. Bypass effects will simply mean that the sampler bypasses the effect chain and goes straight out, so it isn't affected by any of the overdrive compressor EQ sections. It's got its own built-in drive as well. Adds lots of extra harmonics. And you've got a gain control, so you can have a nice blend between the sampler and the oscillators. We've also got a pitch control. So at the moment, it's pitched up by 12 semitones, which is one octave. We could take it back to zero, and it's gonna be an octave lower than we just had. Or we can push it all the way up to 24, which is two octaves up. Definitely works best here at 12. Moving just to the right of the sampler, we have a sub octave. This is always gonna be aimed at being a sine wave that sits below everything else, just to add some extra weight. So if we engage it, we can hear that sine wave. Now it has an octave control. Currently at zero, we can really hear the sine wave and it's not sitting below everything else. So if we were to drop it by one octave, now we can really hear it's under everything else. If we drop it by two octaves, it will likely be too low, but incredibly sub heavy. We can drive it, adding extra harmonics to the sine wave. But never quite getting there. Like the sampler, it has the bypass effects option, but it also has the fat option. This pre-drives the sign, allowing us to drive it even further. It's 
But this is really make the sound our own though. Below the sampler, we have OS1 and OS2. Very simply, they are waveform generators with an octave and gain control. If you click on the waveform, we have a bank of many options that you can choose from, all varying slightly and all useful. There's also a right and left arrow just to cycle through them. The octave control simply lets us go up two octaves or down two octaves. This means our oscillators always stay in tune with whatever's being played via the MIDI controller. We can introduce a second octave as well with a different waveform. sound. Notice how, how many of the waveforms work really well together. All of these are fed into a filter. Now, as this is a bass synthesizer, it is very simply a low pass filter. However, we can control it in a couple of ways. We've got three controls at the bottom. We've got drive, cutoff, and resonance. However, we can just click on the GUI and adjust the cutoff and resonance on the fly as we like listening to it at the same time. It's a nice way to find it just the right spot. Again, we can drive it into the filter, again, adding more harmonics. And lastly, just below all of here, we've got our master envelope, our mod envelope one and two, and our LFO one and two. So the master envelope is very simply how the amplitude of this synth is gonna work. And we can just grab the points or we can use the controls at the bottom. I much prefer being able to just grab into the GUI. Grab here just to affect the attack. This would be the length of the time it takes the sound to get up to its full level. This control here would be sustain. So this is gonna be a length of time after the sound's achieved its full level that it decreases over. So we could have it so it always holds its maximum volume, or it could sharply decrease. And we could use it to make a very plucky sound like this. When combined with decay, it's how long it takes that sound to decrease by a set level. So we could have it happen very quickly. But there's still a little bit of sustain left, so it still holds the sound at a low level until the release. And the release time is just how long it takes it to go from the end of the sustain level to silence. Mod envelopes are the same thing, but can be applied to many areas inside 808 Studio. So really simply, if we select a mod envelope and we select something like the filter cutoff, we can create an envelope that causes the filter cutoff to be adjusted based on the control here, which is the amount control. When it's being affected in this way, we can see it animated on the cutoff. LFO works the same way, but is a low frequency oscillator and will pulsate. We have a nice sync control under speed. So we could set this to perhaps go to the filter resonant and then give that an amount control and a speed of one over four. And we can see it animating the resonance here. Moving a step over to the right, we've now got the effects section. In here, we've got a nice overdrive distortion, compressor, EQ, chorus, and filter. And they are all completely rearrangeable in their order. We have these little tabs just here on the right-hand side, and a simple click will rearrange them in the order that you desire. So for example, we could put our EQ right at the end just to really design our sound as we like. We 
could maybe put our chorus before distortion. Making a ridiculously powerful phasey type sound. If we needed some final control, we could just bring our compressor all the way down at the end to control it. Having these effects built in in this kind of chain where you can rearrange them just means less need for having effects after the processing in your chain. You can do it all within the synth itself. And the last section over on the right hand side is effectively our master section. It's going to affect a lot of the performance of the synth and the overall audio that comes out. So we simply have master. We've got a nice left and right monitor and a gain control. Then below we've got our performance control in terms of velocity. So if we have velocity switched off, all notes are going to be a similar level. If we have it switched on, then depending on the MIDI control, they will perform quieter or louder. We have our portamento time and our pitch bend range. It's currently set to one octave there. We've then got our slide control, so our slide time and the octave range at which it's going to slide. And the curvature, we can simply just click and adjust the curvature type for the slide, which is a nice little feature to have there rather than just a linear time. And last but not least, we've got a side chain. This side chain input just helps us reduce those impacts that are coming from the 808 sample. If we turn it off, for example. It's a little bit flat sounding. The side chain just helps it give a little bit of bounce that sits with everything else. Especially when we bring the drums back in. That, guys, is a breakdown of how you can program your own 808 bass sounds in Initial Audio's 808 Studio 2.